So mistakes are part of life, and that's true uh, even from the beginning uh, of life, or I guess uh, the beginning of the production of the gametes. Uh, meiotic errors are fairly uh, frequent in humans, uh, a rate as high as about 20% um, in terms of uh, meiotic divisions uh, results in uh, some sort of uh, error. Now, oftentimes this is uh, what's referred to as a non-disjunction error. Um, the chromosomes are not appropriately um, separated uh, during either meiosis one, homologous chromosomes are not separated during meiosis one, or the uh, sister chromatids are not uh, appropriately separated uh, during meiosis two. And ultimately, uh, what results of this uh, are gametes that have extra missing chromosomes. Now, oftentimes um, this is lethal, so uh, so if a, a gamete is produced uh, that has uh, an abnormal number of chromosomes, uh, when it uh, fuses with the other gamete or gamete from another parent to form uh, the zygote, uh, it's referred to as uh, what's called a non-viable zygote, so it'll spontaneously abort uh, early on. Uh, now, um, these circumstances where an, an individual chromosome uh, is missing or uh, is uh, found to have an extra copy uh, is referred to as an aneuploidy. Uh, so trisomies are uh, um, probably the most common type of aneuploidy that we would run into, uh, specifically like a trisomy 21 or Down syndrome. Now polyploidy is uh, much more often seen in plants, uh, and this is a circumstance in which entire sets of uh, chromosomes are found in addition to the, the diploid number uh, within a cell. Now this is much more common in uh, plants where some of the uh, types of foods we eat will have um, multiple extra sets of chromosomes. Uh, like uh, certain uh, varieties of wheat will have as many as uh, six uh, sets of chromosomes in them. Now this uh, image here shows you a depiction of uh, what can occur to cause uh, non-disjunction. Uh, we know that these microtubules uh, connect to the kinetochores of these homologous chromosomes, but uh, again errors can occur where the microtubules do not make that connection. So when uh, motor proteins start to walk these chromosomes toward the uh, uh, centrioles or to the centrosomes, uh, then the uh, homologous chromosomes will not be separated. So you ultimately, again, wind up with some cells having extra and some cells having missing. Now, if uh, non-disjunction occurs during meiosis two, then sister chromatids do not uh, separate appropriately and uh, a small proportion of cells have extra missing chromosomes, uh, but uh, some cells uh, from the original germ cell uh, still wind up having the appropriate uh, complement of chromosomes. Now, uh, non-disjunction is a common form of um, error in uh, cellular reproduction, but uh, the chromosomes themselves uh, can uh, sometimes suffer um, damage uh, or, or breakage, which is, you know, a sad situation. Uh, now, um, a deletion occurs when a portion uh, of a chromosome breaks off uh, and then is moved to uh, a homologous chromosome. Now, when that occurs, uh, the portion of the, or the chromosome that's lost uh, its segment is uh, referred to as having had a deletion, and uh, the segment that had gained uh, the portion from the uh, homologous chromosome uh, has uh, received duplicate copies. Uh, now, fragile X syndrome is a, a, an example of uh, this duplication where there can be repeating units of a gene and uh, the more repetitions uh, or the more repeating units there are in the, in the chromosome, uh, the more uh, significant the uh, phenotypic effects uh, of the condition. Uh, inversion refers to uh, circumstances in which a portion of a chromosome is broken off and then actually uh, reverses its po uh, position and then gets reattached. Enzymes will reattach it uh, to the original chromosome. Uh, and then translocation is somewhat like uh, this deletion duplication scenario uh, where a portion of the chromosome is broken off, but then that segment actually moves to a non-homologous chromosome. Now we can see that uh, in these images. Uh, here uh, a portion of a chromosome uh, again is lost. Uh, you see a segment that is lost. Uh, now that uh, segment can then be uh, transferred then to another chromosome. Uh, duplications can occur. Uh, oftentimes uh, these can happen in tandem where uh, a portion is broken off of one uh, and then uh, placed on another chromosome. Here we see inversions rather than BCDE, it switches now and becomes uh, DCVE. And then this uh, translocation has chromosomes moving from, uh, or, I'm sorry, 
portion of a chromosome moving from one chromosome to another. Uh, let's see, in terms of chromosomal disorders, autosomal disorders are found uh, in circumstances where there are extra or missing uh, chromosomes in chromosomes 1 through 22 or you have pieces that are broken off or uh, inverted. Uh, trisomy 21 is uh, oftentimes referred to uh, when talking about chromosomal disorders. Um, this occurs when uh, an offspring inherits a, an extra 21st uh, chromosome. And let's see. Now, uh, specific aneuploidies are circumstances in which uh, individual or particular chromosomes are lost or gained uh, are seen uh, in the sex chromosomes. Turner syndrome is the only example of monosomy that I can think of. And that happens when a female inherits uh, a single X. Now, this is a little interesting because you know, we know that females, typically XX, uh, have X chromosome inactivation occur. So in any given cell, usually there is only one X chromosome that is active. So the fact that uh, Turner syndrome in which uh, there is only one X chromosome in a, in a nucleus to begin with uh, results in certain phenotypic effects like decreased stature, sterility, uh, webbing of the, uh, between the fingers and uh, uh, by the neck uh, is you know, somewhat interesting. Now with Kleinfelter syndrome, an individual is XXY now, because of inheriting this Y chromosome, the person has the SRY gene, so the uh, embryological uh, tissue uh, that uh, uh, signals for the gonads uh, will specialize in the testes. So the individual is male, but because of this extra X chromosome, it's considered to be sort of a feminizing uh, condition. So the person may be uh, tall, uh, slender, reduced body hair, uh, will be sterile, and uh, can uh, have some uh, gynecomastia or some breast tissue development. Uh, now, trisomy of the X chromosome, female with an extra X chromosome, uh, usually results in a, a, a phenotype that is indistinguishable from um, females who are, uh, have two sets, or two, I'm sorry, two X chromosomes. Now, the reason for this is because of this X chromosome inactivation. Uh, the female may have three X chromosomes, but we just have two of them being inactivated. The final example we'll look at here is in a circumstance in which a person has XXY. Now again, with the Y chromosome, the person is male, but uh, because uh, the Y chromosome has so few genes on it, and really most of those genes are just related to producing and operating the testes, uh, there are minimal uh, phenotypic effects. Um, again, usually it's just increased height is the, what's most commonly cited. Now, uh, genomic imprinting is a, a fascinating example of uh, what can happen early on in development. With imprinting, uh, certain genes are switched off, or you know, in this case they say stamped, uh, when eggs and sperm are being produced. Now this happens when a methyl group uh, will attach to the DNA. You know, When the DNA is sort of clamped down to this methyl group, then that gene can no longer be transcribed and then translated into a protein. So in effect, it's shut down. Now uh, this is rather rare uh, in mammals. Uh, it's only maybe a couple of dozen uh, genes in humans, but these genes are uh, certainly critical for uh, embryological development. Um, now, uh, what's fascinating about this is that uh, there are you know various hypotheses for why imprinting occurs, but there is this sort of a competition, this genetic competition that's uh, thought to occur, um, or could potentially be occurring uh, in the wombs of uh, certain mammals that can uh, have uh, multiple paternal uh, pregnancies, or you know, paternal influence. Um, the thought being, if uh, two males um, have uh, have developing embryos competing for maternal resources, uh, if one uh, male's offspring uh, have greater size, then they may be able to outcompete uh, the other male's uh, embryos uh, for the nutrients uh, from the mother. Now, in, in, the, in the mother's perspective, having multiple offspring uh, survive is better for her genetically than having fewer offspring survive. So they have these sort of, all three uh, individuals have sort of these competing uh, genetic um, wants. So uh, typically imprinting on the paternal side uh, will lead to increased uh, size of the offspring and imprinting on the uh, maternal side uh, leads to decreased size of offspring. So they oftentimes will uh, cancel each other out. So it's sort of this fascinating. Uh, the genetic battle that occurs embryologically for access to nutrients. And that's just an image of that, explaining that. Uh, let's see. Finally, we look at extranuclear genes. Most of what we focus on uh, with Mendel or Mendelian inheritance 
is uh, genes found within the uh, nucleus. Now certainly there are uh, some genes found outside our nucleus, uh, particularly in the mitochondria of our cells. Uh, mitochondria in our cells and chloroplasts in mitochondria uh, and even the plasmids uh, in uh, plants um, are derivatives or uh, uh, the uh, descendants of um, bacterial cells or eukaryotic cells that invaded in early prokaryotic cells uh, a couple of billion years ago. So since uh, the mitochondria and chloroplasts that we see today are descendants of those cells, uh, they do have their own circular DNA, just like bacteria do today, and they sort of operate semi-autonomously. So uh, again, when we talk about Mendelian inheritance, uh, most of what we see uh, is found within the nucleus, but there are these uh, small pieces of chromosome uh, that are found, or small pieces of DNA that are found uh, outside the nucleus. The end.